Hello students, the very first lesson that I am going to discuss today is the last lesson. Well, it's the name of the story. It's written by Alphonse Dore, a French author. He has written the story in the backdrop of the Franco-Prussian War or the Franco-German War that took place between July 1870 and January 1871 for almost about seven months. This war was won by the Germans and two French districts of Alsace and Lorraine were annexed into the German territory. After that it was ruled that only German language would be taught at the schools of these two districts and French would not be taught any more. Now what impact this decision had on the people of these two districts? The story tells us about that. So in the story, the narrator, a young boy named Franz, uh, was going to school, but he did not wish to go to school because he had to prepare a lesson on participles that he had not done. He thought of playing truon, but then he decided to go to school and he hurried towards the school. When he went past the town hall, he saw a lot of people had gathered in front of the bulletin board. What's a bulletin board? It's a kind of a notice board where different uh, news articles and notices are put up. So the people had been checking out something and uh, Franz was curious, but he had to hurry. So he started running towards the school. The blacksmith even called out at him, asking him not to hurry because he would eventually reach school or he had enough time to reach school. When he reached school, he found the atmosphere to be different. There was no hustle, no commotion. On other days, there would be a lot of noise of children uh, opening and closing their desks and re uh, reciting their lessons. But that day, it was absolutely silent. He could see children had already taken seats um, and Monsieur Amel walking up and down the classroom with his ruler under his arms. When he reached the classroom, Monsieur Amel did not scold him. He rather asked him to go and take his seat. He rather spoke to him in a very sweet and uh, soft voice. Franz was surprised to see um, a lot of townspeople had come and occupied the back seats of the classroom. Why had they come? Franz wondered. Then he noticed that Monsieur Amel was wearing his finest clothes. He was wearing his green coat, his frilled shirt, his embroidered cap. Now that dress was worn by Monsieur Amel only on special occasions, on the days of inspection or on prize distribution days. But that was not a special day. Why he was wearing so wearing that uh, dress? Franz wondered. But then Monsieur Emil himself said that it was the last lesson that he was going to deliver because order had come from Berlin to teach only German at the schools and French would not be taught anymore. My children, this is the last lesson I shall give you. The order has come from Berlin that we are no longer to be French. After today, only German is to be taught in our schools. Now it was a bolt from the blue for Franz. He had never paid attention to the language, to his own mother tongue. And now he had no more time left to actually learn the language. Now he felt heartbroken. Then Monsieur Emil started delivering his lesson and Franz realized how easily he could understand the lesson being delivered by Monsieur Emil. Now he thought if he actually had paid enough attention before, he would certainly learn the language better. Now, in the meantime, Monsieur Emil asked them to ask the students to recite their lessons. When Franz's turn came, he could not recall even the first words from his lesson, but Monsieur Emil did not scold him. He rather said that Franz was supposed to do his work in time. He did not have to or he should not have uh, postponed his work to be done on a later day. If you have time, you have to utilize it. You should not 
just postpone your tasks to be done in the future. But he also blamed Francis' parents for not focusing on his education. They were rather more focused on Franz earning money from, uh, for the family from a mill or from the farm. Monsieur Emil even blamed himself for asking his students to go and water his plants and sometimes he would even uh, call it a holiday when he wanted to go fishing. Then he told them uh, how French language was a very beautiful language and it was the most logical language in the world. He told them that if they held on to their language, if they did not give up their language and culture, there was no power in the world that could suppress them and subjugate them. No power was there in the world that could take away their freedom. Now after that, he uh, gave them, gave the students some copies, uh, some notebooks um, as a parting gift, new notebooks. On the top of the notebooks, uh, he had written Franz and Alzac. They looked like miniature flags that were flying around in the room. Now the students started writing their lessons and there was no sound at all except for the scratching of pens on paper. Franz could hear the pigeons cooing um, on the roof and he thought to himself whether the Germans would make the pigeons sing in German too? <laughs> but that was not possible and the pigeons would always remain free. And that uh, proves Monsieur Amel's words that if you hold on to your language and culture, there is no power in the world that can take away your freedom. After that, some more classwork went on and then the charge bell struck 12. And then Prussian soldiers could be heard uh, returning from their drill, their trumpet could be heard and Monsieur Emil stood up. Now he looked very pale but Franz said that he also looked very tall. Now it shows the decision of um, French not being taught at the schools of Alzac and Lorraine um, had broken Monsieur Emil's heart. He had been working at that school for 40 long years. Now he had to leave the school. But it did not manage to break his spirit. He was still that tall figure who would not um, give up, who would not just um, surrender to the decisions of his suppressors. Now, Monsieur Emil wanted to say something, but his voice choked. He barely managed to write something on the board. It was Vive la France. Vive la France means long live France. And that was um, it. Then he said that the class was dismissed and the students might go home. Now, Monsieur Amel was a teacher who had been teaching at that school for 40 long years. Now he had to leave. It was his home for 40 long years. Now he had to leave with his sister. Now uh, German would be taught there and it was breaking his heart. And the story emphasizes on the fact that if people don't give up their culture and language, then there is no power in the world that can actually take away their freedom. So the story emphasizes on us um, valuing our culture and language, right? So uh, that's the story. You need to go through the entire story. And of course, you need to focus on certain factors, certain parts of the story, like um, uh, the bulletin board uh, part where the people were checking out the bulletin board. What's the uh, significance of the bulletin board? What was there on the bulletin board? Of course, you can now understand that the notice that was put up on the bulletin board uh, read that only German would be taught at uh, the schools of Alzac and Lohen, right? And then you have to talk about what um, Monsieur Emil said when Franz could not uh, recite his lesson. Did he scold Franz or did he just uh, present some other reasons? Oh, I forgot. You have to remember that part also. 
uh, that means when friends arrived at the school how did he find the school to be what change uh, changes did he notice etc and you also have to remember that part when Franz said whether the Germans would make uh, the pigeon sing in German too. That part is also very important because that emphasizes on the fact that Monsieur Amel um, explained that people should hold on to their language and culture. So, and also uh, the central theme of the story. The central theme is that that we should value our culture. We should give importance to our culture and language we should uh, should hold on to them we should nurture them love them it is the end of the lesson i am soon going to reach out to you with another lesson before that i will try to provide you answers to some questions if you have any queries you can always um, just contact me thank you